We are at ACC 15. You know, for probably the past 20 years or so, the uh, data seems to have supported the occurrence rate for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy of about 1 in 500. And in a review topic of the week for the March 31st issue of Jack, we learned that that may not be accurate. So I'm with Barry J. Merritt, who is an MD and director of the Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Center at the Minneapolis Heart Institute Foundation. Now, the paper is New Perspectives on the Prevalence of Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy. Why did you do the paper, first off? We did this because, for a variety of reasons, uh, it became obvious that hypertrophic cardiomyopathy was a much more common disease than uh, even us, who are dealing with the disease all the time, had uh, perceived. Uh, there are a number of factors th that led us to think that. Now, obviously, we're not prepared to do a, a new population study uh, that, uh, just for HCM prevalence. Uh, that, that is probably never going to happen. But what it did is we drew on a number of factors that would suggest that the 1 in 500 is an underestimate. So what did you do specifically in order to come up with uh, some new and hopefully better numbers? Well, there are clinical uh, findings and also um, molecular uh, genetic uh, ones in populations. Um, first of all, uh, the gene, the sarcomere gene, or genes responsible for HCM, are uh, known to occur in the population and therefore uh, capable of producing the disease at a much higher rate than 1 in 500. In fact, published uh, data would place that closer to 1 in 200. Uh, so there's point number one. The gene or genes are out there um, uh, commonly. Secondly, uh, our clinical observations, uh, namely that uh, new subgroups of patients have been identified pr uh, after the 1 in 500 data were uh, produced, um, add to the 1 in 500. For example, uh, there's large groups of uh, relatives and families uh, who have a disease-causing mutation but do not have any uh, evidence of the disease on imaging. We call that phenotype negative and gene positive. Uh, those uh, you know, family members, uh, of which there are hundreds if not thousands, were not identified uh, previously when the 1 in 500 was put together, which is based on echocardiograms, in pro bands. Uh, then we uh, have introduced uh, magnetic resonance to diagnosis, and we know that there are patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy that are only identifiable by MRI and not by echocardiography. All of these things together say that this is a, uh, a, 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 the most common genetic disease. What the precise number for prevalence is certainly is not known, um, but we believe that it's clearly more common than one in 500 based on all these observations. I think the, the, the major message here is that uh, this is a disease that deserves attention. There are thousands of patients out there that may be mi either misdiagnosed or uh, uh, overlooked, and that uh, deciding on precise prevalence uh, maybe not as important as recognizing that fact. So increased awareness among not only cardiologists but health professionals in general? Right, right, right. This is a disease that has had a bad reputation for a long time in many respects uh, as an oddity, as a rare disease, as uh, one that we never see in practice, that type of thing. Uh, by establishing an um, you know, better prevalence estimates, which is what this is, then I think that underscores the need to recognize that this is a common, treatable, contemporary disease that's out there, uh, and that if you expect to recognize it more frequently, you, the chances are you will. 
Now, the, the best news that I've heard in some time is in another paper of yours that's coming out in, in, uh, in Jack, I think, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in adulthood associated with low cardiovascular mortality with contemporary management strategies. Okay, what did you find? And just in terms of, this is optimistic, I, I think. Well, I think it's about time that there has been some optimism about this disease. As I said before, uh, the reputation is grim, unrelenting, untreatable, essentially, at least not effectively treatable. Patients will die prematurely from the disease, almost certainly, given the diagnosis. All these old myths persist to some extent even today, uh, 2015. What we did was ask the question, uh, what is the true mortality rated, related to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in a, a new era in which there are major treatment interventions that can preserve life and extend life. And with the new understanding of the natural history of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, what is the true picture of this disease for the patients, many of whom are misled by old ideas that should have died uh, decades ago? The findings are that HCM mortality, that's death due to HCM, is 0.5% per year. That's a number very different from previous literature, which at one point, if you go back far enough, was 6% per year. Uh, now, the reason uh, we're talking about a mortality of 0.5% per year is that this reflects modern treatment, contemporary treatment. Largely, the implantable defibrillator for prevention of sudden death. So far fewer patients are dying suddenly with this disease. Um, the use of uh, transplant, heart transplant, for patients with um, end-stage heart failure after drugs no longer control symptoms, um, has preserved life for many patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, modern defibrillation in the community uh, with therapeutic hypothermia, all those uh, new ideas and, and effective treatments apply to patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, not just to patients with ischemic heart disease. And you're showing it really has been a game changer in terms of these contemporary strategies. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that by putting together a thousand patients followed up to 20 years from two referral institutions, the Minneapolis Heart Institute and Tufts Medical Center, that um, we've recharacterized as it is what the natural history of this disease, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, is in 2015 using the treatments that have been developed. None of those treatments were developed for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy specifically, of course, but the application, particularly the implantable defibrillator, to a genetic heart disease like this has changed the uh, natural course of the disease for many patients. Well, I on the one hand, we, you know, it's going to be a little bit more frequent that, uh, than we probably anticipated, according to one paper. But on the other hand, it's really looking like the contemporary strategies have been very helpful. So please check the, uh, the end of the video here. We'll give you the references and citations for both of these papers from Barry Marin and from CardioSource World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.